Okay, so I'm going to do another session. Uh, I, I can give you an update. Uh, I haven't done a stream in a while. Uh, I, I ran a few experiments with the um, with the, the learning chess bot uh, that I did in the last session, and it was it was mostly. I mean, so it was. I think it was working. Like so, basically, what it, it would do, uh, it it learned to like go for like really aggressive openings, like. Um, you know, attempting scholar's mate, and sometimes it would accomplish scholar's mate because it was playing against a really terrible opponent. Um, but then when I made it play against a smart opponent, it just could not win. It couldn't win. It couldn't avoid hanging pieces. Um, and I, my hypothesis is that this is because it's not able to understand, you know, pieces being under attack. I, I just didn't give it enough information. Um, I was giving it the piece positions and then these random features, and I don't think the random features were sufficient to represent you know, diagonals and, you know, night moves. Night moves are pretty complicated. Uh, I, I just don't think it was enough information to for the AI to be able to learn to understand when a piece was under threat. So uh, so I think today what I'm going to finally do is try to write a multi-layer neural network. So, so rather, rather than just having a bunch of, like, features that are weighted by a score, this is what's called, called a linear model, we're going to use a nonlinear model. So this is the whole basis behind deep learning, um, it's the idea that the, the learning algorithm should be able to learn how to take the raw data, which is the piece locations, the, you know, castling rights. Um, I guess, what else was I, was I giving it? I wasn't, I wasn't, give, I wasn't giving on Passant information, but, but you could put, imagine putting that into the, into the game information. So there's like the raw data and then the deep learning, you know, what's, what makes deep learning so powerful is that it's able to, it allows the machine learning algorithm to learn how to, Sort of represent that information at a different at a different level of uh, complexity. So uh, that's what I'll try to do, and I'm going to try to do it with this uh, software framework called Jax, which is a one of the newer deep learning software environments out there. It's mostly built by Google Google engineers, but it's you know it's open source, so it's a it's a really an open source community project. But it's something I've been wanting to learn, and I'm going to try to do it. I, and I'll I'll say that. Jax does have a lot of pretty mature deep learning tools in it, but I'm going to try to do the most basic thing. Um, all of the code that I've written uh, in in the previous sessions has been using, uh, well, not all of the code, but the, the, the math code I've been writing in the previous sec sessions uses NumPy, which is uh, one of the more, well, probably the most popular um, Python numerical uh, programming or linear algebra toolkits out there. Basically, I can replace that with Jax, um, and that'll allow me to do something nice, which is um, it sh should allow me to do really efficient automatic gradient computation, um, which is a key step in deep learning. So basically, the gradient helps us learn, uh, helps the computer algorithm figure out how to adjust its weights um, to uh, improve some score. And in our case, our score will be how well the the bot um, you know predicts the material loss or gain and um, and potential checkmate patterns so we'll try it out um, I, I mean the codes pretty similar to how it was last time I, I, like I said I made a, a few changes let me see if I can highlight some of the changes um, I, I allowed the, the the learning bot now plays as both white and black so there's some code changes here that just change like I'm now I'm calling I have a learner color variable that uh, that identifies you know who's you know which color the, the the AI is playing as this game, um, and it randomly chooses that this is it's randomly choosing that um, in this line of code. Um, I I noticed this. I mean I did this because I thought maybe the bot was over over reliant on the fact that it was always playing as white. But after trying this, it still didn't make much of a difference in terms of it. It just kept, it just keeps hanging pieces. Um, and you know when I when I have a train against a random opponent, it, it can win a lot of games. Like it wins, it ends up winning like seventy five percent of the games. And actually, I, I want I want did want to show one of those games. I think I can. Whoops. Uh, last time we we uh we were able to get the um. Let me try this one. I can't remember exactly which file. Uh, let me try. This is the latest one. Let's just look at a random game in this in this file and see what what's happening. So this, I believe, 
the player the the AI I was playing is black. I have it marked here. Learner zero is a random player. Learner six sixty three thousand is the is after sixty three thousand iterations. Um, this is another game I had loaded in, but it didn't seem very informative. So I I don't actually know what what happened. Okay, it looks like we looks like the oh wait white. I thought the let me read this again. Yeah, white is the random player. The random player wins. So this is a loss. That's surprising. Um, Let's see if that's consistent. Like, what we should expect to see is the the white player should play random moves, and the black player should play moves that like look like they're good but aren't actually that good. Um, so yeah, that looks like a random move, but so does that. I mean, so I don't know. So um, let's let's see. I mean, I, I think that the I think that the black is the learned bot because it, it, it you know pushing the pawn like pushing the pawns toward the center seems like something that the bot would learn. Oh, we're getting a spammer. Let me uh, let me get rid of this spammer. I think I can do it in this interface. Block. Cool. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. So let's see. Um. Yeah. It looks like it looks like the black is playing. You know. Black is playing learned strategies, but it does like this silly thing, right? It just totally hangs the knight, not understand. I'm probably because its opponent will never take it, right? The opponent doesn't take that free piece. Instead, it takes a not free piece, a defended, a defend, a defended pawn, um, and that's that's typical behavior of the learned model. Um, and and I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised that we end up losing this game because I, I know it ended up after training for a few hours the bot rarely loses against a random player um, but it's it often it will still often draw yeah it looks like that's this is like a random play accidental checkmate seems a little suspicious right it seems like a little bit too perfect I'm not perfect I mean you know, white made a lot of errors here but okay uh, let's look at one more game just to verify oh, oh right so the last thing I did was I, I built a simple bot uh, here it is. This is a, the, what I'm calling the hanging engine, and it's just a. It plays random moves unless there's a hanging piece, and if it if it detects a hanging piece, it'll just take the hanging piece. So I, I did that because I wanted to really try to give the AI a chance to learn to protect its pieces, and um, and if you look at the tensor board for this, this is what I have open. The this is the reward score for the bot over time, and when it's sorry, this is annoying. When, as it starts out. You know, it's kind of low. It's like minus 70, which means it's getting checkmated a lot, um, but it's losing a lot of, well, I mean, this is an average. So it's not only is it getting checkmated a lot, it's also losing a lot of material. Um, and as it trains, it gets a little bit better. I mean, but not much better. Like it's it's still averaging by the time after it trained it for like overnight. Looks like it trained for a few hours while while we were sleeping. Um, it, it goes to the it's average is like minus 30 in the score so a checkmate is worth 100 so it's like it's getting checkmated a lot of times and then when it's not getting checkmated it's losing a lot of material um so it just wasn't able to learn to protect its pieces even though it did it was learning so i think this is why i if i just convert my framework to allow for uh you know learn essentially a multi-layer a multi-layered neural network um it might be able to actually learn maybe we'll see um so that's my plan uh, so let's see. Uh, so I haven't even, this is, I'm going from the very beginning. I haven't even installed Jax. Um, I don't actually know for sure how to do that. I suspect it's just called Jax and I can put it in the requirements and then we can install it. Um, let me put it in the requirements file and see what happens. So this is just running the command line, like pip install. Um, but it's doing it through this. The graphical interface of PyCharm slightly more convenient. Okay, so it successfully installed it. I, I hope that's the same Jax that I want, but we'll find out. Um, and now, I, what I've seen is that we can actually import. So, so the first thing I want to do is like as a hack, I've seen that you can just do import Jax numpy as JNP. Sorry, that's not a hack. A hack would be if I just go like this. I'm gonna. I, this is, I want actually want to try this. So I'm importing jax.numpy as np, which is which means that all of my code that calls numpy code, which used to call np, 
I, it would be you know, I'd say like np dot zeros or np dot whatever np dot dot is another thing. Um, anytime I call that, it's now going to call Jack's numpy instead of numpy. And and what the what I've read is that Jack's has this you know this numpy module as a as essentially a replacement for numpy. It's almost all the stuff should work. Anything you write in numpy, not sorry, not anything. Most of the things you write in numpy should be convertible to Jax simply by doing this replacement. But typically, the right way to do it is to do JNP. Not there's no the right way. A, a best practice probably would be to write JNP, so we know we're using the Jax one. But I'm just going to hack it and write this for now and see what crashes or see if it runs. Let's see if it runs. Um, it probably won't because there's a couple subtleties in Jax numpy that are necessary. Um, but like this is definitely not using Jax to its fullest potential. In fact, we won't, certainly won't do that by the end of today's stream. But because um, Jax is much more powerful than what I'm going to show. But um, I just want to see if this runs. So I, I guess I will. Just, do I just hit go? I, maybe I want to save. I'll just change. What am I going to change here? Right now it's set to yeah random colors. Um, I'm having a play against engine black, which I believe I was set to the hanging engine. Yeah, it's set to the hanging engine. So it's it's a challenging opponent. I mean, challenging for a learning bot. It's not challenge. Well, it's a little bit challenging for humans. I mean, for a beginner, this hanging engine is actually quite powerful to play against. I suspect if I plug it into Lee Chess and let it run, uh, certainly Bert Bot right now, the, you know, my bot account is... It, it has had a plummeting uh, rating in the last few weeks because I've been doing the learning engine and it's not been learning anything useful. Um, and I, whenever I leave it online, people challenge it and gain rating points against it. And yeah, anyway, so if I left hanging engine running, I, I suspect it would gain some hit or some rating points either against like simple bots people try challenging me with or uh, amateur players playing like, you know, casually against it. Oh, well, not, ca not literally casually, but... Um, you know, playing rating games but not paying attention much because it's you know uh, I think the bots like rated 700 right now um, okay so let's just try running it I, I, I suspect it will crash oh you know what I'm gonna clear away some of this clear, clear away some of these logs uh, I'll just I'm gonna compare to um, Maybe it requires Jaxlib to be installed. So I have to do some more installation stuff. But I think I'm going to, this is, I'll, let's, let me look at this. No, not output. I don't want to output. I want to look at the, the log, the, the most recent log. Is this the one I have open? And like, I want to save this. So I don't want to be, I want to be able to compare it to this. So this one is 629. Was, did I start this at 2 a.m. or something? Crazy. Okay. Um, is that what that means? Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's the most recent one. So as a check, I will just remove these. I'll remove this. That. I'm removing everything. I'm just going to put it in the trash and reload this and see if we have this the right one. Reload. Okay. Yeah, this is the one I want. Uh, no, it's not. See, yeah, this is bad. Why, why? Why is the color? Okay, let me just do a full reload. It might just have trouble because the files all changed so much. Okay, yeah. So I have a, I, th I have this log saved. I don't want to lose that one, so I want to keep that around. And then I'll, and then this will help it be cleaner for us to look at the different runs. And now let's see. So I need to install Jaxlib. Oops, it's open maps by accident. Okay. Um, I need to install Jaxlib. Jax. Jax require. Oh, what is? How do I get rid of this? Jax requires Jaxlib to install. C installation for installation. Let's look at the tips here. So I'm running on my Mac laptop, and it's pretty tricky to. I mean, it doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU, so I can't use CUDA. So I'm. Um, I'm just gonna. That's weird. That. We support installing or building Jaxlib on Linux or Mac OS. I'm on Mac right now. Why? What's wrong with? Hmm. 
Maybe I just need to type in jaxlib into the um, requirements. All right, let's see if that can install. Downloading, it's downloading, so that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm do, sometimes, usually I would do this in like the command line because it's a little bit, you could get a little bit more information, but since I'm, since I have the, the, the uh, this PyCharm open, it's convenient to just quickly do it here. Uh oh, oh, I, I opened the file, I deleted. Okay, so requirements, I don't think I need that anymore. So now I can try running this. It's doing some indexing stuff, but. So I think one of the things like I have already already have this like this like manual calculation of the gradient. I think it's where is where am I doing that? I'm doing, I have the Q loss that I'm calculating. Oh, the Q learn. I think it's probably in here. Ah, Jax NumPy has no attribute random. So this is the one of the things I've read is that Jax um, needs special care when dealing with random random numbers. Um, and and part of the reason that they do that is because the one one of the like main goals of Jax is to be able to do automatic differentiation, and and it's pretty hard to differentiate through random random numbers unless they're specially controlled, like you, unless you like you treat them as basically constants that are drawn from a sequence, like a fixed sequence of numbers. So there's some subtleties there. I'll deal with that, but I wanted to show you this. Um, this is where I'm calculating the loss and the gradient. And so hypothetically, if things are working, like where I'm here, I'm calculating, uh, wait, is, is close? oh yeah. So I'm calculating the gradient here, but hypothetically I should, I might be able to just write this. I might be able to just not compute it here. I compute the loss, which is the error on the the uh, estimate, the 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 AI's error on estimating the future rewards. Um, I calculate that error. Uh, I add it all up, and then I just compute. I just call compute gradient, or just, I think it's just grad. It's something like uh, it would look like it would look like this: gradient equals grad loss, and that would be the whole thing. And it would automatically do this. I wouldn't need to calculate it by hand. It turn, turns out the calcula calculation by hand, um, where am I calculating it? It's batch previous features. So, I, I mean, I you know, this is a pretty simple formula, but once we add a second layer to the neural network, it becomes still not that bad if it's two, if it's two layers, but it's uh, it, it starts to be a thing that requires math and then translating that math into code and so then there's opportunities for errors in both of those stages and so it's the, the it's, it gets a lot more um elegant if you can just have the computer software figure out that gradient for you but anyway so uh, number one thing is this this random thing you gotta i gotta figure out the jacks random state requirements so jacks random hmm. This probably should be enough. So Jax random provides uh, so P, PR, so PRNG and pseudo random number generator, and you give it a a seed random dot uniform. This key can be used any, and so you give it a key. Uh, okay, so I guess what they're asking me to do is replace, oh, replace with this jacks.random, I think, right? So jacks, this is random, random, from jacks import random. So I can just do jacks.random. That might be sufficient. Nope, it's not. Oh, jacks, I have to import jacks. Hmm. Do I have random otherwise? Random? No, I don't. So I pr probably should do, I probably just do, do from Jack's import random, random. And then, then I use random instead of np.random. And can I do random state? Is that legal? Not sure. 
random state. It's not in this big list of methods, so I suspect we're not allowed to do that. Well, that's weird. I think instead of using a random state, we're supposed to use a key. I think I guess the key is like a random state. So I guess I'm going to do. And what's silly is this. I, I want to cut all this out anyway in the end, but um, but yeah, this just to get it to run. Let's do. Okay, so we get a key object, and just gonna, we're gonna. It's called random state. Um, I would like to call it key. I can just use uh, PyCharm to to do this. So I have to rename it properly everywhere. So now every time I call random state, I'm gonna, or every time every time I previously referred to referred to a random state, I'm now calling it random key. Um, and then I'm getting a because uh, now instead of this, I believe I pass. I believe I should say. Uh, random dot rand n, which means normal distribution. Um, so rand n, how do you call that? What? Normal. I probably would do normal. Um, so this is normal in the sense of like a Gaussian distribution or a bell curve is called the normal distribution. Um, so I'm pulling normal variables out and I need the shape. This is the shape and I'm going to give it a key, self.random key. And then here I'm also looking for rand, rand. Can I get a uniform? How do we get uniform? Uniform. So what are the default, what's the default range for uniform? Uniform. Sample. Rand int, that's rand int. Shuffle uniform. Doesn't say the default in this information. Oh, here, maybe this will say. Default is zero to one. That's what I want. Is it good to just use the defaults? Not, not really, but it's okay. It's fine. So I'm just gonna say, so we're doing random.uniform uniform i want it to be of size of key so the first self dot random key and then the size is rand d oh yeah so rand d um is the size of the the number of random features i was using but now since i'm in the process of converting this i want to convert this to a neural network so rather than thinking of these as random features i'm just just going to call these hidden d these are going to be called the hidden, they're, they're, they're the hidden, um, it's the hidden layer in a neural network. They're, these are variables that are not defined by the input um, initially. They're not initially defined by the input. And they're learned to somehow transform the input into, some, into something useful. Um, let's try it now. Let's see if it runs. So I think that was to fix the random problem, and and I might not have successfully fixed it, but let's see. Okay, so let's see. Interesting. So no GPU found falling back to CPU. That's fine. Um, just I don't have a GPU right now, or I don't. I do. I don't. I do have a GPU, but it's not compatible with CUDA. Uh, and then there's a syntax error. Let's see. What's this? Named shape. This is in Jax, so it's a Jax error. Random, uh, it's not happy with this uniform shape thing. I think I probably need to do this as the shape, maybe? I don't know. It's saying it must be an iterable, so I think it's expecting this to be like a list of dimensions. I'm not sure. Um, expected type union sequence named shape got int instead uh, let's look at what this is looking for so it's looking for a key and then it's looking for a shape and the shape is a union sequence int so it's a sequence of integers uh, maybe this will run let's see it let's see it let's try it uh, 
Okay, still still unhappy. So it's a type object argument after star must be error. Okay, so it's the same the same kind of thing. It's complaining about the same line of code. It's weird. It was happy with this one. Let's debug it. See if it actually was we're truly happy with this. Like, did that really generate the matrix that I wanted? I wanted it to be a thousand by three ninety five. Oh, actually, I want to change this. I set it to a thousand because I wanted to make it more complicated with the random features. But it's um, it's an interesting question. If if you look at a chessboard, what the number of these hidden features is kind of like how many concepts do you want the the uh, chess engine to consider? And and these concepts include things like like attacking on a diagonal or blocking or I don't know there's all these different concepts and so so like that's the roughly one way to think about what that number should be um and I don't know maybe I shouldn't leave, should leave it at a, at a thousand but I could try something smaller to start out so it's faster all right so projection 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 self projection okay so self projection is a device array so that's the jacks object it looks like and it's you know 395 by a thousand that looks okay it looks like a bunch of random numbers. Can I view this? Oh, it looks like that. That's not so helpful. But yeah, I mean, the, the, it looked like it worked fine for this normal, but the uniform call is not happy. And so I must have be doing something wrong. Sample uniform random values in min val, max val. So what am I doing? So I'm supposed to give it key, shape. The D type is by default what all these defaults look good to me. The shape is what I need to change, and for some reason the shape it's supposed to be an optional a optional a tuple of non negative integers. What's wrong with my tuple? Is this is it is this tuple not? Hmm, let's try typing it ourselves. So we're doing random uniform. I'll just try different stuff. So self dot random key, like I just do. If I just do one, what does that do? Will that work? Let me get rid of this. Yeah, still on, still not happy. So let's do one by one. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it likes one by one. Okay, this is one of the annoying the annoying things about NumPy. Um, I guess I want it to be hidden d by one um so the annoying thing about numpy is that it was always a hassle to figure out whether you're, you want a n by one vector which is not a thing right it's sorry n one n by one matrix which is like a matrix that's a single column um or do you want like a length n vector and they, they uh different functions in numpy treat them differently and it's a uh, it can be that can be a major debugging problem, and so this is just an example of that. And and it maybe Jax doesn't allow just vectors. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll learn about this. Yeah, maybe that's what's happening. In, in which case, I actually like it better this way. If it's if everything has to be a matrix. Well, no, but but then everything can be a tensor too. So like, why not? I don't know. Something. I'm not sure about this. Okay. Ah. Uh, this is another subtlety I've learned. I've read about with Jax. We're not allowed to do what I did here. So, this is uh, where's this code here. So here I'm setting the value of a particular entry in a vector to be something. And also, this features is also a length seven vector. So that's weird. Um, yeah. Well, this one's important. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to use this in the actual version of this. So I think what I'll do is type index, type index, type. Um, uh, I have to yeah. So the, the reason that they want us not to do this is because they want to be to keep track of all the changes you ever make to any variable. And if you do this in place changing, like you're taking it, we're changing it in memory, right? We're looking at where does the computer store this vector. For this particular index in that vector, let's actually just change the number there. Um, but what Jax wants to do is it wants to keep track of every change you've ever, you've ever made, so that when it, when you if you ever need to calculate a gradient, you can go back and look at all those changes. Um, so there's a way to to get around this. Um, I think I've seen it in the documentation somewhere. Maybe it's here.
there's going to be some stuff that's just going to need some need some re re-architecturing just to make it Jax friendly in place updates here we go so yeah so this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to do this kind of thing and they're saying you you're not allowed to um so what do we do index update so we do this thing called index update if the input values of index update aren't reused so okay i think i just do this so it's called it's called index update it's from jacks.ops And there's also this thing. Hmm. Okay, it's a little ugly, but I guess if it's hard coded, if I don't have to do, why why is it like this? So this is the Jax array. I want to slice it, and then I I'm, what is this second term? Um, index add. Index add. I think this is a this is actually closer to what I want because I want to I want to be accumulating things. So I think maybe let's look at index add. So also from jacks.ops, I think it was what it was called. Jacks.ops. Um, And I believe I will replace this. Yeah, let me comment out this old line, and that's going to say index add. Yeah, so it's like this. It's equivalent of that. So we give it an index. We give it what we want to add. We give it x. Okay, so. It returns the value of x, so we have to actually have to do features equals. Now we do features. No, nope, we do index add features type index and then value. I think that's correct. This will be. What was the other one called? Index update, index update. So yeah, this feels like it's gonna be really inefficient, but like the whole point of Jax is that, I mean, another point of Jax is that that this stuff in Python is inefficient, but um, Jax has some, you know, is able to do what's called just-in-time compil compilation. So it can, it can compile the code to be more efficient if it can figure out um, so features six, one if we can figure out how to optimize it better. Index update. Let's try to run it, see if that, that caught all of the instances of this issue. So yeah, the question is, is there a more efficient way for me to build up the feature vector? Um, it looks like I'm doing this again. So piece grid. Yeah, I'm doing this all over the piece grid too. See, I wonder if I can just like accumulate it in like a Python object and then just like convert it to a JAX vector. I wonder if that's a better way to do it. Because the point is that this is not an actual change in place, right? I'm not, I'm not actually changing things. I'm, I'm, I'm building a thing that's, I'm building a matrix. And then I, I want to return that matrix in the end. So, so like what Jax is concerned about, like the, the, the reason that it has these restrictions is that it doesn't want you to take a matrix that you've previously done computation on and then go and change something in it. Um, and that's not what's happening here. So I could do something like, well, let me just do it. Hmm. You see, even this, I feel like, oh yeah, right. And this won't run. Um, I feel like this, yeah, I, I have regrets now. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do, put this back to how it was, and that's my plan. My plan is to put it, put it how it was. I'm not gonna use the index update. I'm just gonna create these things as NumPy arrays. 
So features, and that means that I can't use the hack that I was using. All right, let's, let's, I, I'm going to take back what I did. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually import it as JNP. I'm going to import NumPy as NP. And I'm going to look for every instance of NP. So NP.py, let's call it JNP.py. JNP, JNP, ah, this is not going to be happy. Uh, let's just do random dot uniform self dot random key. Is this going to be okay? I don't know if that's going to be okay. That might crash. That's fine. We'll deal with it later. Uh, so this I actually want it to be NumPy. This I want it to be NumPy. And then after this, I'm going to do jnp okay so here i'm going to convert convert features castling and piece grid grid to jacks castling i made it this is yeah see it's a python list okay so uh okay let's say maybe NumPy to Jax. Mm, NumPy, Jax .numpy as array. So it converts the input to an array. It expects something as input is an array like, so it should be okay. The question is can it be, it includes lists, tuples, and ND arrays. Okay, so it should be fine. So I should just be able to say features equals Jax JNP. JNP, JNP dot as array, is there space? See, this is this is what I mean, like NumPy is one of the most important software frameworks in, in the Python environment. And this, like, it has stuff like this, like as array, like you should have an underscore there according to uh, my understanding of, you know, standard Python style. But as a result, now that I'm writing code with NumPy, I'm, I'm, I'm not following my code ends up not following PEP Python style. Um, features, that's it, that's all I need. Um, castling equals JNP to as array, castling, piece grid, JNP to as array, piece grid. And this Ravel stuff, um, uh, I'll leave it as is. All right, let's see. Where else is there a NumPy? So, so I'm calling the cosine. I'm going to change that eventually, like as soon as I go into the real neural network. Ah, this is going to be... Oh, this thing's okay. Wait. No. Why is this a NumPy array? Scores. Scores. This search function... I'm not so sure that I'm going to need this search function in Jax action score I could leave it as numpy I have to be careful about switching between using both numpy and and jacks numpy objects but in this case this is just to make a prediction on what choice is the best one I think it's okay to I think it's okay to leave this as a I think, oh, uh, you know what? Probably this is the one. Another thing where Jax will really t take it, have a big advantage. But I, I think I can turn this loop into a Jax like map function. Um, I'll I'll leave this as is for now. I think I think reasonably this should be, um, not stay in NumPy for now. So here, whoops. I was clipping the gradient. I'm not going to do that now. Should I do that now? I turned it off. Well, let's say let's say I'll do J and P in case. And then I, I have this this heart you know hand, I hand coded uh, RMS prop. And then I turned it off because it wasn't. I didn't think it was helping anymore. Um, J and P to square root. Put. Uh, this random, I think I'm okay with that. NP dot square root. This is epsilon. Epsilon's being used for yeah. That's not really a Jax heavy thing. I think the important part is like the score calculation should be done in Jax. 
This stuff doesn't really ma matter if it's in Jax. Yeah, this could I, I could get in trouble here. Like I'm not, not real trouble, but like I might mess up, I might mess some stuff up because I'm mixing Jax and NumPy arrays. But we'll see. All right, almost there. Maybe um, all the input arrays must have the same number of dimensions. If the array has at index zero has dim one dimension and the array at the index oh, but the okay, but we have a one dimensional and a two dimensional array. X projections, X projections, X. X probably came from no, X came from this concatenation, and it's saying that it has one dimension, and then the projection says two dimensions. So all right, let's look at these two objects. All right, so projections is a device array of a thousand by a thousand. That's that's weird. And X is a three ninety five by nothing. All right, so it's a length three hundred three hundred ninety five vector. Which again, I, I don't know. What, I don't know why the uniform was unhappy when I when I called this. It was unhappy with just passing in hidden D as a single dimension. I'll have to revisit that. That's really strange. That should be allowed. But in this particular problem, why is projections a matrix? I thought it was. Uh, it's a, it should have been a vector times a matrix. So I had to go back. Where's the, where are we actually? Where's our here? So th the question is, why does this computation, specifically this one? Oh, I bet. I bet it's. Yeah, I know what happened. I bet this is. This I bet made a column array, and this this is sorry this is a column array. This probably made a row array. Let's see what the shape of this thing is. The shape is one thousand by nothing. So that's what I want. I want a thousand by nothing size thing. But then now when you add offset, it actually probably completely ties to that exactly the problem I was talking about. This is a thousand by one. So when I add these together, I think I get a thousand by a thousand because it's like adding a row with a column and it's trying to fill out the whole, yeah, it's trying, okay, that's so annoying. Um, I guess I should have done, I could have done, uh, no, it's, it's really gonna be this uniform problem. So let's try, let's try the uniform command again. Let's see if I can get it to work. So this was like, why can't I do, why can't I do this? Why can't, can I do this? If I go like that, aha. <laughs> okay, how dumb is that? So so yeah, the, the trick is that I had to put a comma so it knows that this is a tuple, I guess. I don't really fully know what's happening here. Let's see if that works. So I just make it like that. I think that'll work. So this, this says that this is the list of dimensions. It's a list of one thing. For some reason, without the comma, it doesn't know it's a list. Probably because Python like just ignores the parentheses in that case. I guess, I guess that's what, that's what's what's happening. Like without the parentheses, sorry, without the comma, those parentheses, it's like, oh, there's just extra parentheses. Let's just delete them. Nope, still unhappy. Is this? Ah, it's a different time I did this. So here I had to do the same thing. This is initial when I'm initializing the weights. Okay. I think it's going to start running now. I suspect this is it. Okay, it's running. It crashed. All right, uh, rand int. I still, I call rand int somewhere. Self random key dot rand. Oh, right. This should be just random. Will allow me to do that. Yeah, it got through the one iteration, but then it was starting to do a learning step. And same line, it's missing. Ah, it needs a key first. So I had to give it a self dot. Wait, is there self here? This is self. Okay, self dot random key. And then this is the min value. Let's check if it's uh, key shape min val max val. So I, I, I actually need it to be 
shape is none. I wonder if I wonder if I can do this and leave shape as the default value. And then I wonder. Well, you know, oh no, yeah, I have to run it again. The annoying thing is after I get this done, like there will be no no change. It will just run. It should just run just like it did before, which means it won't work. Unexpected keyword argument minval. Is it? Did I spell it wrong? Is it? Yeah, it's one of these. Okay. Yeah, after I get this this stuff running, this converting it to just to Jax, it should be the same math as I had before. Um, but what I hope to be able to do is to then replace the gradient computation with a gra automatic gradient computation, and then I can change the score computation to just some arbitrary uh, set of co of operations. Still the same line. I'm doing something wrong. Oh, yeah, it's missing the shape. So it really needs shape. So shape equals one. I guess I just want one number. I don't know if it's going to let me do that. Is it going to like that? I'm sort of worried that it's not going to give me a single integer. Shape sequence int. Yeah, it's going to be. This is gonna be ugly. Uh, I suspect I might need to do like this to like index the zeroth entry inside this i. That's, that's so ugly. Um, I think I'm actually just doing a choice. So probably I can do a random choice instead. So if I just replace this with some kind of choice operation, um, Let's see how you do that in the random jump uh, numpy or jacks random. Mm. Where did I put that? I think I closed that that tab here. Random dot uniform choice choice. So we get it. You give it a key. You give it a an array, and you give it shape. What's shape? Shape, a tuple of ints, optional, outputs shape, it's optional. Uh, default is empty, in which case a single value is returned. That's what I want. So I just want to do key and A. So I do random.choice, this, this, this is the array, this is A, and then the key will be self.random key. And this line of code is a little long. It's, I, I just zoom it in so that it's easier to read in these videos. Hello, Kiwi Gamer. Um, I, I zoom it in. Normally, it normally looks kind of like, well, like, why is it not letting me zoom out? Um, anyway, so it, it, this is readable. It's just, it's it's a little bit hard to put on the screen in a video. But let's try it. How strong is your chest bot? Right now, it's very weak. Uh, so I had a decently strong chest bot. It was, a, I, I would say it was rated like, I think it was probably, I mean, it's not as strong as a relative word, but it was, it was rated around like maybe I would say 1200. Um, and then, oh, actually, no, sorry. I'm thinking 12, I'm thinking standard. I'm thinking like other websites, like on, on Leechess, I think it was probably average. Oh, uh, no, it wasn't average. It could beat Stockfish like three, level three, um, before. Um, but then I switched to a, doing a machine learning bot. And so now it's just trying to learn chess from scratch and it's really bad. It's really bad. It doesn't know how to protect its pieces. And so today my goal is to try to make it um, give it more uh, more brain power to be able to actually learn how to understand what it means to, de to defend a piece. Okay, I'm getting closer though. This is just a bunch of annoying uh, programming um, hiccups that are in my way right now though. So this is saying I'm, I'm getting farther into the code now. It's complaining that a must be an integer, integer or one dimensional. Which one? Oh, this it's the same line of code. So I'm still doing. A must be an integer or one dimensional. That's not correct. I am only learning math at the moment. Um, so when you do machine learning, I want to be able to understand the formulas. Yeah, uh, I I showed some of the formulas a little bit. It's um. This is a very specific form of machine learning. Uh, this, this this is called reinforcement learning, and specifically, I'm doing what's something called Q learning. Uh, there's lots of other forms, but I, I think the overall 
thing that's that I'm building here. The, the, the reason I'm trying to use this Jax software framework is that it allows you to write some, you know, what's the, called an objective function that determines that lets you score how good the machine learning algorithm is doing at any given time, and then Jax allows you to to optimize that function to basically make like the the function will be some sort of error in the prediction of how good a chess position is, and and it will be able to try to make that error smaller and smaller as it learns. So that that's like some of the, I guess that's one of the mathematical concepts we're looking at. We're looking at optimization. Um, so what, so A is an integer array. Key is key object. Generates a random sample from a given 1D array. A must be integer. This is so weird. A is a 1D array or int. Isn't, don't I have a 1D array? Oh, is it a list? It's. I think it's not a Jax list. That's probably the problem. It's not an array like. So I guess I would need to put the buffer. Buffer dot add item. What is buffer? Oh, it's just it's my circle buffer. Oh shoot. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull this out. This is not gonna be. I'm not gonna. Oops, not not there. I'm gonna make it so that it's not a. Um, Hmm. Let's call it from random or import random as pi random. This is a little bit ugly, but I'm just going to try to get around using Jax for this operation. This this is not a Jax necess. This doesn't. I don't think this needs to be Jax. So I just do pi random dot choice and just give it the buffer. I think it's complaining because it's not a Jax object that I'm choosing from. But we'll see. I'll show you the, while while it's running. I'll show you that this is a loss. Uh, this is oh, this is the reward. So so this is this is how much reward the bot is getting. But I'm also printing the loss that it's calculating. So this is this is how wrong it is about predicting how much reward it will get after making a move, and it's quite bad. This like these numbers are like averaging thirty, and and these scores are based on like the standard chess material value. So it's like it's getting it's like off by three queens. <laughs> how much it you know how much it thinks it's winning by if, if it thinks it's up like if it thinks it's up like one pawn it might be down three queens that's what basically three queens plus one pawn um, that's very bad sorry not even three like three i'm rounding three i'm rounding queens up to ten so it's like more than three queens um so it's it's quite bad okay length of unsized object okay, getting further what whoops what, li what line is this happening on um, it's in TensorFlow, or it's a, it's a TensorFlow thing. So it's this line. Image. Space weights. I'm gonna get rid of this. I don't want this anymore because in, in the neural network, we won't be able to even visualize that. Maybe that'll help. Okay, it looks like it's running. It played a game, right? So this is a game that it played. It should be, you know, two random bots playing against each other. It's really slow, um, much slower than it used to be. I wonder, yeah, I wonder what's the slowdown. But it's, it ran, but I, I, sus I suspect it's that feature stuff that, well, no, I, now I think I changed that. I, yeah, let's 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 profile and see what part of this is actually slowing things down. Mm, I do that here. I do run. Nope, run. Oh, here, profile. So while while I look at this, there's the there's some hacks or not hacks. There's um some tricks on how to. How to use Jax. So I think maybe. Let's try the quick start. So th th this is what they're saying. It's like, 
like this is just an operation that you treat it as if it's a numpy array and it's slower it's transferring to the gpu every time i don't have a gpu so i mean sorry i do have a gpu but my jax is not running on the G my gpu so why would it be slower Could be that I need to do this just in time. And you do that by just calling JIT on the function. But it has to be on a pure function, which I don't I've not been computing. So is this all the bad like the wrong idea? Like should I not be using JAX for this? Yeah, so it's like doing all this stuff. Um, let's look closer here on the graph. So the QLearn function is taking the longest. Well, the learning engine itself, which is the, which is the main file. And then it's this. So it's QLearn, and then none of these. None of these things look obviously like the thing that's the bottleneck. There's this stuff, process primitive, bind, greater than, total, own time. Might be a mistake to well I, I mean i don't want to give up for sure but like it might be a mistake to be using jacks in this way i suspect this is all these dot products that are but like why is why is the dot product so slow So like in the tutorial, in the JAX tutorial, let's see. So NumPy, they have a NumPy operation. They do a dot product of the, of the NumPy operation and it takes them, um, you know, 800 milliseconds. And then they run it in JAX and it takes 700 milliseconds. Wait, I don't know, sorry, this is, this is, I don't know, this is the NumPy already. So, okay, so this was the original, sorry, wait, this is NumPy, nope, this is JAX, this is JAX. Do they have a NumPy example? This is, this runs on the GPU. What's weird is even when they, even when they, um Jack's quick start. Even when they like in the tutorial it says no GPU found. So they generate random stuff. This is this is okay, we added a block until ready because Jack's uses asynchronous execution. This one, JMP dot, what's the difference between these two blocks of code? They look identical. This is a typo? Did they mean to write this as NP dot? Because like, here you're at import here you're importing numpy wait okay the difference is np.random.normal oh i guess i guess i guess what they're saying is 
oh this was a jacks this was a jacks object in the first place and then they multiply it um here this is a numpy array that's being turned being put on the hmm, that's being put onto the gpu so there's look there's extra overhead there okay Hmm. No, it's it's very slow right now. It's running, it's running, but it's very slow. So let's see if we can. I'm trying to think what was what is so much different. I mean, so for sure, this stuff might be. This might be expensive, but I don't see how it would be that that expensive. And then the 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 uh, oh, I lost the I lost the um, I closed the uh, profile results. But when I did the profiler, it didn't look like the features function was taking that that long. But let's see. Let's see. So the question, is, like you said, QLearn was taking a long time. So inside QLearn, we call interesting. So inside QLearn, we don't actually call the features. Oh no, here, here. So we call features here. So I wonder if that's where things are slow. Okay, learning engine, QLearn is the main thing that's taking up. There's no other, based on the color coding, it looks like QLearn is the slowest thing. And then inside QLearn, the things that are, are called, you know, features is called quite a lot. 29% of the time is taking up, you doing features. Random project is 10% of the time. Action, action scores. 20% of the time. Oh, so action score also calls features. So it's not just QLearn that calls features. I'm running out of time for what, how, how much time I had to do stuff for today. So I might, I might just be stuck. Like here's like, I run through Jax. I'm not, I, I wanted to go through basic, simple deep learning, but it's too slow. It's just like with this, with a linear model, this is too slow on my, on my CPU machine. So there must be something I'm doing wrong. Cause I, I've seen this like with PyTorch, other uh, and, and TensorFlow, if you just like do basic stuff with these other software frameworks i found that they there's just like a small there's a small slowdown um because they're keeping track of other stuff right they're, they keep track of more stuff than numpy does but there could be something where i'm doing i'm doing something with these matrices that's making small changes here and there and that could be causing it to have to keep track of a lot more than it normally would it normally would and just for comparison, just off the top of my head, I remember I was getting like, when I started out, when the games were a full 60 moves, um, which was the maximum number of moves I allow, it's, uh, it was taking like one, one, under one second. So I would get like one point something games per second. And then as the bot started to learn more, it would, it would, learn, it would win quicker. And so it would start getting more, ga more games per second. Now this is like taking you know, over 10 seconds a game. I guess let me let's stop running it. I'll just I'll, I'll do an experiment. I'll make it smaller. Uh, yeah, here's the well, I'll leave that open, so we can reference it. Uh, I will change that hidden D. 
put it in dimension. Let's make it 10. 10 is tiny, but... But yeah, let's see, what, let's see what happens. It could also be something to do with, like I had mentioned, there's some worry about mixing NumPy and Jax NumPy. Could be something where it's like switching back and forth. It's copying back and forth between the two different represent representations. Yeah, so it's like slightly faster, but like it's so still super slow. So it's, that, it's, it's not that matrix multiplication, right? This is this is this this hidden unit stuff is doing some extra matrix multiplication. I don't understand why this game happened. This, this is like I'm just gonna look at look at the fend of this game because it's. That's like a, looks like a really short, like how did it learn to, to do that so fast? It didn't, it's just luck, right? It's... But like somehow it knew, like there was, it's just how did it get so lucky that, that it happened to pick the checkmating move? It hadn't learned anything at the time. Had it? Four, four games? This is uh, black was black is the random player, or oh no, black is the hang is the hanging engine. Oh, maybe I do I did I program the the engine to go for checkmate if it sees checkmate? I don't think I did. I don't know. That's strange that it had such a convincing win. All these other games don't look like that. Well, okay, so if it takes 10 seconds to play a game, maybe I can live with that. Let's try, let's see if we can move forward and I can maybe quickly get something done. So I suspect white is hanging engine because, so let's say if, if, black, if black doesn't know anything about chess and white is just sort of taking all the free pieces, then yeah, that looks right. So, so white is playing like hang, hanging engine and black is playing like a random engine because it just started to learn. That's consistent with what we expect. So okay, we're playing one game like every ten seconds. That's slow, but let's let's say we live with that. So now now here's what I want to do. I want to change this. Let's make this a hundred. So the, uh, there's going to be a hundred hidden dimensions. Um, we're going to do this projection. Uh, I guess this is like initializing these weights. Uh, weights, weights, weights. So I'm gonna save. I'm still saving the weights, but it actually won't work that well, to, because I, I actually need to save. Well, so for now, I'm not gonna save the hidden hidden weights, which doesn't make sense because without that, this won't work. But I will set these to be. Yeah, sure. Let's just initialize them as this. So, th so these these are now these two things are now gonna be parameters that we're gonna try to learn as well. Um, and then when we do this random project, rather than doing a cosine. Let us, yeah, I can leave it as cosine. I mean, I was going to say we could put like a relu. So that's when one of these, yeah, let's, let's just leave it as cosine. So what I actually want to do now is try to do, try to compute the gradient of loss. So I believe, Let's call it Jack's gradient equals. Now, how do we do that? So let's see. Grad. So we, from Jack's import grad, and we just do. Oh shoot! I think it has to be of a function. This all stuff, all this stuff where I'm using this pi random. This needs to be jacks dot random. Well, no, actually, not necessarily. This is inside here. Let's see what the grad function does. 
Does it require, does, what does it take in as input? It's a reverse mode gradient, grad 10h, so you use, use this gradient of a function. So yeah, it has to be a function. That's a little different from so like in in pi in pi pi torch pi in pi torch, you can take a, a variable and take compute the gradient of a, of the of the variable, but here I need to compute a, a gradient function. Which means I could. Yeah, this might be a, a unsuccessful session. It's probably the least successful session. I mean, this is a, this is just a start, right? This is just a start. So, so I started to convert some of my code into Jax, but I'm gonna have to rewrite a bunch of stuff. Like, I had to rewrite the loss computation as a function that takes in weights um, instead of it being stored as like inside the object. It's gonna be it's gonna be a function that takes in the weights and calculates the um, yeah, and calculates the uh, the loss. That's not so bad actually, because I can just pull this. Hmm. So like this this stuff doesn't need to change. Like this is this is the the store the new the new position that we're seeing into a buffer. We calculate the loss here. I guess this block of code just needs to become a function. Can I do that really fast, or is it gonna be is gonna have to be something that take a while? So yeah, this example is you take in yeah you 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 take a function. Let's see. I think the, what, what I'm stuck on right now in my head is I'm thinking about this this random sampling. So I'm pulling out a mini batch. I, okay, one thing I do know is that I like there's existing libraries for all of this like already out there in Jax, and I could just like download that and plug it in, and plug it into our, our chess. Like I would just have to like write an adapter for the chess game as an as like an environment. Um, I was hesitant to just like go, jump all the way there because it seems like it's like I don't get to practice writing a reinforcement learning algorithm all i'm doing is just you know connect, connecting these pieces um and you know that's all there it, it can be done um but i don't think i want to go there i still i still want to continue trying to do it like not truly from scratch obviously because I'm, I'm using so much stuff but like just uh like at least the reinforcement learning algorithm i'd like to have it be something i i code up just for practice because like you know of course all this is for practice anyway because like why I'm, you know, I none of this is new. I'm just slowly building basically AlphaGo eventually. Um, Alpha, not AlphaGo, Alpha Zero. Not literally, but like I'm building like a simpler version of Alpha Zero over time. So it's not it's not new. I'm just trying to build the pieces that are interesting. Um, and you know, eventually I could just download Leela, like, and that would be that's like one version of this. Like, just download Leela and I'm done. <laughs> it's not not very interesting. Or it is interesting, but uh, not not what I want to do for my hobby project. Anyway, so I, I'm thinking this 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 stuff here, pulling out mini batches. Um, I know that like Jax has that kind of stuff imp, uh, implemented in like some at least maybe some maybe not Jax itself, but like one of the companion libraries has that. I don't want to just use that. Um, so this is where the, the the randomness might create a problem because I know what the for the for this gradient stuff to work, it has to be a pure function, which means that it just takes in the weights and and it outputs something, um, and, and and no matter what or, or rather, uh, would if you pass in the same weights, you will always get the same output. And if you have any random sampling in there, then you don't you don't get that behavior. 
So I have to think about, I, I guess I, have to, I guess I have to read. Let me spend a minute reading about how um, they do that for um, for random mini batches. So pure functions. So the proper way, wait. Uh, the proper way to use Jax is they use it only on functionally pure Python functions. A Python function can be functionally pure even if it actually uses stateful objects internally, as long as it does not read or write external state. So they're saying that I can use stuff. I can read from states. I can read from states. I can read from something. So that actually, that might mean that I can. I think that's what that's the the principle of the using the jacks key, the random key, that can, that's like an object that can change. It's not truly random. It's like, it's pseudo random. So I, I think maybe I can use that to sample. Um, it's not recommended to use iterators in any jacks function. You want to JIT or gain control flow primitive. Uh, okay, let's not deal with that. Okay, so maybe I can write this. So if I write this as, this is inside my, um, if I do, oh, this is my problem with choice was being annoying. Uh, but if I do random dot choice, again, it was like, it wants it to be an integer array, but it's a one D array. Oh, right. It's not a Jax array. So I could store this as a Jax array, but that'd be really slow. Right, if I, if I store it as a Jax array, I'd have to convert the entire data. So what this is, the buffer is the set of all the positions we remember from our history of playing chess. And if I store that as a Jax array, then I don't get the benefit of using a, just a mini batch, right? The whole point of mini batch learning is you take a subsample of the entire, you know, big data set that you've collected, and you just have to do the computation necessary on that small sample. Um, so it looks like, like I have, I think I have a set to pick 10. I think I have a set, yeah, I, was, I have a mini batch size of 10. So it should, you should only cost 10 something to make an update. Um, and if you instead have to convert the whole thing into a, a Jax array, it might cost, you know, a million, however, whatever the size of the, the full buffer is. But if it's also, if it's, if it's a Jax array, I, I'm not allowed to modify it in place, which is the, how the whole circular buffer works. So this is kind of a, a sticky trap that we're in. Um, So I guess my question then is on this, on the Jack stuff, can I pass in other stuff into the function? Like, for example, here, there's a function, you get an extra term. What is this trying to tell us? Most of them return an error. Well, that's, this is an iterator. So mutation of variables. I, I mean, I think the whole point is that you're not supposed to change something aside you're just you're just supposed to output something but can i write a function that's like can i do like lambda calculus maybe impure uses glow, glow rules so it will, it will complain Internal state. 
see i i don't can i do this like maybe i can if i just i, I have the batch here if i like write the the error as this like define loss oh you know what i have to yeah that's, that's not great this is just gonna get messy if i try to do this really fast let's let's try loss function is equal to or it gets weights so weights and we're gonna define it as this thing Comment that out. Oh no, I am going to keep it. So, okay, loss function error, blah, blah, blah. This is going to be weights dot. Okay, can I write it this way? And not error. I'm going to say loss error squared. Okay, return, return error squared. And now I'm going to do loss function self dot weights. And I'm going to say gradient. Let's call this Jack's gradient. See if we get the same value is equal. It's going to be equal to loss grad weights. Sorry, I missed, I missed, I'm missing one thing. So I have to do, oops. I have, to say, I have to say loss grad equals grad loss function. So I'm, I'm thinking like this might work because I'm defining the function inside here after we define the mini batch. So if the ba if, it can, if it can treat the batch reward, the max feature score, these things, if it can treat these as constants, ah, shoot. This has, this has a, I think it has to be inside here. Max feature score error. Wait, first off, do I, did I not import grad yet? I guess I have to import random grad. But now, what, where, okay, shoot, where was I? It was uh, inside qlearn. So here, so I'm defining a function inside a function, which is weird, but that's that's fine. Um, I mean, I think it's okay, right? Because now I'm just going to use that function here, you know, here to define, here we calculate the loss, here we use it to define the gradient. This term, uh, this term is not, is first zero. So jacks gradient equals zero. And I will also, the weights, this is self dot weights. I think the problem is that now this thing needs to, this stuff needs to go inside here inside this function and there's an if which I think I was just I was just reading and I decided to skip over it's I don't think Jax is gonna like that there's an if statement in here um, but maybe it'll be okay I don't know let's see so now so we compute error and then we, why is it complaining shadows error and outer scope I'm okay with that um, so we define this thing, we, we compute it, uh, okay, max features. And now when we compute the error out here, we don't have it, but I don't need this. I think I can get rid of this. I'll just get rid of that. Gradient. Oh, so this is the true gradient. Ah, okay. So I wanted to compute it the old way. So let, let me actually, yeah, let's actually compute it twice. So I want to compare these things. So this is going to be self dot weights. So I want to compare gradient and Jack's gradient and see if they're the same. Uh, error I need to keep. Error I keep. Um, let's call this Jack's loss. That will be the ver for us to verify Jack's loss equals zero. And we'll actually compute the original loss plus equals error times two. I mean, square, I mean, to the power of two. Okay, I think if I did this correctly, I mean, I don't think it's going to run because I suspect these these this if statements not good. But 
let's see if we try running it I guess I want to debug it let me do this a print this is kind of a little bit of a hack I'm just writing a nothing statement and I'm putting a debug point here so I can look at these values okay let's try to see if this gets us anywhere and if, if not I can just cancel all right so it's unhappy what's which part of the is it unhappy whoa that's a invalid okay, invalid syntax so that's just the so I just wrote something that's not true Python uh, maybe no oh, whoops Jack's gradient I guess I don't need that right I'm calculating yeah I'm not actually gonna use this uh, I'm not doing anything outside of the loop so I'm only, only inside the loop I'm using Jax to calculate the gradient for that particular example for each particular sampled example but this is definitely not the fastest way to use Jax but I'm I, I'm hoping that this is, this is just gonna give us wow it didn't crash I'm hoping it'll give us some um, it actually didn't crash uh, Jack's loss is zero. Loss is also zero. So everything's happy so far. I might need to put a conditional breakpoint. Gradients zero. Loss is zero. This will only get interesting when loss is non-zero. Why is loss zero right now? Oh, because there's no, been no material gain or loss. I think as soon as someone, as soon as one of the players makes a move that that leads to a material change, well, you'll have some loss. Maybe I'll put it, make this conditional. So I'll say loss not equals zero. I'll continue from here. Okay, so we have a loss that is 1.0. Jack's loss is also 1.0. The gradient and Jack's gradient look different. So that's not good. Something's wrong. Yeah, they're different. So this is, I got a one and I got a two. Minus one, minus two. Is this just doubled? Jack's gradient ended up being double. Oh, you know what? I think I. I oh, haha. I think I have a. I says my my gradient calculation might be wrong because it's a squared error, and I'm treating it as like one half the squared error. So yeah, I think it's actually. I think it's okay. It's like I if I I was off by a constant factor when I calculated the gradient by hand, but if we just I suspect if I do. Um, I suspect if I do. Uh, two times gradient it should be equal to Jack's gradient. So let's check it out. So gradient times two equals Jack's gradient. True, true, true. Uh, well, let's see. Let's let's do np dot np jnp. Let's try jnp dot all close. This is um the function that compares if they're within numerical error. True. Yeah. So. So this actually worked, um, but now this is for the weights. This is just for the weights. So what I would need to do is to make this function take in not just the weights, but also the projection matrix. But that's tricky because I, I call this uh, features function to generate the projection matrix, which is all all wrong. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. I actually have to stop now, but it's going to be at a very annoying time because we're like we're like one step away from writing this as a as an interesting neural network. But we, what we have to do is really rewrite the whole process of computing the score so that it just takes in the whole set of weights, including the projection matrix, and then um, I mean, there's no quick way I can do this, right? If I just if I change this to take in projection matrix, I, I, you know, I have to, I'd have to change the features oh yeah I'm also storing the features here yeah I don't think I can do this quickly all right well so here's what we've done today is just I've gotten jacks hooked in here but it's really slow and so I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong with, with it being really slow um, it's able to compute gradients like automatically which is great uh, now of course this is the sim this is the simplest possible gradient and this was this was the formula but instead of it, me having to figure out the formula and coding it up, I just had to call uh, this to generate the automatic gradient. Um, so now if we can convert that into a more complex function, 
that's when we might get some more interesting stuff and we can actually learn essentially what we want to do is learn the projection object which i was uh, where is it so this projection matrix it's a you know right, right now it's initialized a bunch of, to a, a, a matrix of size 100 by 395 the what Jax will allow us to do is to make that as one make that a free parameter that we can then then continue to modify to make the Q function as more po as powerful as possible. Um, and I don't think I th there is this bug I discovered just now of like the the loss, not the gradient I was calculating is off by a factor of two, but I don't think that matters because that's like the, you know that every gradient step we take is is adjusted by a learning rate which is just a free parameter and that free parameter essentially is just like is scaled by two and that's like what's happening so i don't think it makes a difference so i'll, I'll have to sign off now but uh yeah we're, we're getting close to being able to almost write uh you know an actual neural network formulation for this and then it'll be you know i mean i gotta figure out why it's so slow and then maybe we'll be able to actually do some learning I mean, it will, it will not successfully learn if it takes 10 seconds per game. That's just too slow. Um, so I have to figure out why it's so slow. And then, yeah, and then and then we're getting close. All right. Have a good weekend. Enjoy the holiday if you're in the U.S. Uh, if not, enjoy the weekend. Peace.